The purpose of truss analysis is to determine the forces experienced by each member. Remember, since the truss is entirely made of two force members, each member is either in tension or in compression. We will use this information later to identify the appropriate material and the cross section of the truss members. There are two methods used in truss analysis. One, method of joints. Two, method of sections. We will discuss method of joints in this session. Consider the simple truss shown here. The task is to determine the support reactions and member forces. You can easily recognize this is a simple truss. Let's go through a step-by-step -step process to solve this problem. Step number one. Let's first check the relationship to verify if we have enough number of equations to solve for the number of unknowns in this problem. If you look closely, there are five members and four joints in this truss. There are also three support reactions. So the equation is 5 is equal to 2 times 4 minus 3, which gives us 5, meaning we can solve this problem so we are in good shape and we can proceed. Step number 2. Let's draw the free body diagram of the entire structure by removing it from the support. Take a look at the free body diagram. We have three unknowns and they are all support reactions. And we also have three equations. We can now solve this problem for three support reactions using the three equations of static equilibrium. Step number three. In method of joints, we take the truss apart, drawing free body diagram of each joint and applying equations of equilibrium to each joint. Since this is a joint where all the members connect or all the members intersect, this is actually a particle equilibrium problem. This means we will have only two equations and of course we can solve for two unknowns. Let's consider joint D and draw the free body diagram of this joint. Notice member AD and CD are connected by joint D. The free body diagram shows these two member forces. Since we do not know if the member is in tension or in compression, we will assume the members are always in tension. So each member force is shown as coming out of the joint, indicating that each member is being pulled. Also, notice the applied load. Do not forget that. Now, you can write the two equations. Summing up the forces along x-axis and summing up the forces along y-axis. Now, we can solve this problem using these two equations for the two unknown member forces. We can now proceed to other joints one at a time and do the same thing. Once completed, you need to provide the answer for each member clearly showing if the member is in tension or in compression. In the next video, I will show you how to solve this problem step by step.